Stan Jabalisco here with a little more uh, stuff from my book Physics Demystified, second edition. A link to which I will provide in the description of this video so that you can go to Amazon and see what you're looking at right now, a preview of the inside of this book so you can shop just as if you were in a bookstore and decide whether or not maybe you want to purchase the book. But what I'd like to show you now, rather than the cover of this book, and rather than talking about the book itself, is a little bit of the content out of this book, which actually has to do with electronics as well. But first, I'd like to show you a couple of little pictures. Imagine that you are here at the center of this circle, and you have a string with a ball taped to it like, say, a rubber ball or a tennis ball or maybe even a baseball, and you swirl that ball around yourself at a constant rate, say, maybe one revolution per second. This string might be something like 10, 15 feet long, whatever length is convenient, so that you can maintain a circular path at a constant angular speed for this ball and this is a view from directly above you now imagine looking at the situation from the side suppose that this is a glowing ball and you turn off all the lights then what you see is a ball oscillating back and forth back and forth actually it's moving around in a circle like this but because of your perspective you see it oscillating back and forth and back and forth the motion seems to be fastest near the center here and slowest when it turns around at the extremes here as shown. Suppose now that you graph the position of the ball along this horizontal axis here as a function of time going up like that. What you're going to get is a wave. It's going to, and Now that's assuming that you maintain a constant angular speed for the ball. It's going to look like a wave. A smooth continuous wave as time goes from past to present and into the future. It'll look like, well, it kind of looks like a sine wave, doesn't it? Well, yeah, sinusoid. And indeed it is. And if you turn that graph on its side and then break that wave each cycle, say one second for a cycle, that's because there's one second for each revolution of the ball. Here's one cycle here. One revolution of the ball, one second. Here's the cycle. Graphed a little differently, simply switch uh, flipped on its side. And you can break that wave down into 360 equal parts called degrees. Zero degrees is where the ball starts, wherever you choose to make it. Uh, usually it'll be at the zero point or center of the path. That would be something like right here in the center. And then it, that would be zero degrees. That's the way it's usually done. And it starts going up. When it gets a quarter of the way around, you're at 90 degrees. That would be right here. When it gets halfway around to the other extreme, it's right here. And so on and so forth. 180 degrees is a half of the cycle. 270 degrees is three quarters of the cycle. 360 degrees is a full cycle and if you maintain a constant angular speed for that ball and graph it as a function of time like this in terms of its position you will get an exact sine wave and in fact that's how the sine function is defined and that's why in trigonometry you may have heard the sine function referred to as one of the circular functions because ultimately it derives from you and your ball and your string standing there playing with little games. That's uh, how, it, how it comes about. Believe it or not, 
You'll find more about this kind of thing and a lot of other topics in my book, Physics Demystified. Once again, I will provide a link to the Amazon page for this book in the description of this video. Stan Gibalisco signing off for now. Until next time, so long.